I didn't believe in God. I would um, curse God. All in my mind was just living a good life. Every day was was it was real drama. I didn't care. I didn't care who I hurt. I didn't care uh, if I went to jail because jail to me was nothing because I already done so much time. They tell me, well, you're going to jail. It's, all, it's okay. What's, what's three months, four months? It's nothing compared to six years that I've done already. In 93 of December, I, I ended up uh, stabbing somebody. I ended up stabbing somebody and, um, and eventually he ended up dying. They sent me to Todd Road, which is county jail in Santa Paula. They sent me there, and there's somebody there, one of my older friends from the city. So he told me that God has a plan for my life. And I'm like, God can't do that in my life. I'm a gangster. I'm, I'm a meth head. He can't do nothing. I'm on my way to prison. What is he going to do for me? We're going to have some church today. Can we have some church today? We're just getting started in this place. Come on, we need you to put those hands together. There you go, come on. My God is a good God. Come on. I said my God is a good God. He prayed for me. The guy prayed for me, and I was crying. Something came upon me, and I said, okay. I said, God, if you could change a gang member, if you could change a drug addict, if you get me out of this, this thing, I'll serve you. I'll go out there to film work and tell my friends and my rivals that you love them. But I meant it from my heart. I get out on a Sunday and I go straight to Victory Outreach. And I've been there since then. Our congregation is made up primarily of people that come from the lifestyle of gang violence, drug addiction. My father was a heroin addict in himself. Drugs make you do bad things. So my father walked out of my life because he had a problem with drugs. So a lot of the people in my church come from that same background. They're without a father. So I become a spiritual father. I even become a spiritual father to those who were raised with their father. Just naturally, I inherit that title. I am the spiritual father of this church because we are a family. I pray, Father, that you would just continue to take control, Father, now this control of our lives, Father, My job is to bring people to Christ. What, whatever I have to do, whatever role I have to play, I will do it so that people will know about the love of Jesus. It's hard to get people to come to church, but by having dramas, it will draw people. It's like we're preaching a message, but we're doing it in a, in a, in a drama. This really is a drama that I think you will be touched and blessed by. And so tonight, I want you to get ready. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? I want you to put your hands together for the live drama so you want to be a gangster. Come on, give it a good hand. I don't know. I don't like You say, like, people have gifts and... I think God gives you gifts, and then I, I look at it like that. God's giving me a gift to write. The idea for the play was, um, you know, experiences that I've been through um, growing up, and just what I've seen. I know growing up, um, we did things because to do them, and but we didn't understand that later on they would hurt us. Actually, before I was, you know using a, you know, real bad drugs, a needle, or my mind, like, suicidal. My intentions was to go to church for, like, a couple months just to get clean, but something happened where I never left. I've been there 10 years, but I thank God for that, and I thank God for Victor Average. When you see the headline, so you want to be a gangster, immediately you're going to be thinking, whoa, 
This trauma is going to have a lot of violence in it. It's going to have a lot of gunshots, a lot of blood. But I like what what Frank did. Frank kind of put a twist on it. And he basically took us into into the the living room of the gangster. How was your game last night? Well, we won, and but you would have known, even though you said you'd be there. Man, I had things to do. There's the excuse. Man, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. You always give me excuses after excuses. Man, I promise I'll be at your next game. All right, yeah, yeah. Why do you lie to him, Mundo? You don't think he don't know you by now? He's old enough. He knows that you lie to him. You tell him over and over that you're going to be there, and you don't. Tell him what you're going to go do, Mundo. Go to the park and drink beer with your homies and get drunk and just stare at each other all day? Man, whatever. Go make me some breakfast or something. I think the reason why I chose the game is because in my family, um, there was no love, a lot of hatred. It's like all of us, we had hatred toward the people, and it caused me to do um, things that I, you know, I regret. I always wanted to be like my brothers. That's why I chose to be a gang member. I was a gang member for 14 years. In and out all the time, in and out, every, it was like, I did two months, I'll be out for a week or two and I'm back in jail. No need to adjust your tune. Nah. This is just another sign of the crew. Homie, I'm the truth. I spit yeah. better than most of these rapping veterans. If rap music is stale, then come and heal this medicine. The flow is sick, but no paramedics oh, no. medicine. When I come out of the the dark, when I get shot and I have the, the gun wound in my cheek, what I say is some things that I experienced myself. Man, what happened? Where am I? Kiko, is that you? Wait a minute, homie. You're supposed to be dead. What's wrong, homie? Party's over, Mundo. What do you mean the party's over? <laughs> well, you thought you were going to be living that gangster life? <laughs> nah, homie. This is what happens to all of us that want to be gangsters. Hey, Mundo. I remember the party, the drugs, the women, the hotels. I remember all that. That chronic. <laughs> Jumping in you, homies. But don't let me forget, smoking that cristal. Mundo, aren't you glad to see me, Kiko? It's me, dog, a gangster. I'm tripping right now. Nah, this is a dream. <laughs> you still want to be a gangster? This was put on just for you. It was put on just for you tonight. You know, somebody brought you here. Maybe you got a flyer. I don't know how you ended up here. But you came here tonight because Jesus wanted you to be here tonight. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Church, keep on clapping. You guys, we're so proud of you. Every one of us in this church has done the same thing you guys have done. We got out of our chair and walked up here and gave our life to Jesus. And so we want to welcome you to the family of God. And we want to welcome you to your new church, Victory Outreach. We welcome you here. God's really, really changed my life. Now, like, people look at me and choose, like, 
like I'm a big um, teddy bear, a nice person. I'll you know, before it was more like, you know, I wouldn't even cry. I wouldn't even like, you cry, you were, you were weak. There's no, I didn't have no purpose back then. Now I have purpose. I'm married, a beautiful wife, you know, I'm plugged in church, I'm happy, I'm grateful. Um, I'm, I'm going back to where I used to be in the game to help them. If I could say, man, you, you know, do you know you change? Of course I change. People shouldn't look, people shouldn't look at being a pastor saying, oh, I want, I want that to be my career. Because if you're going to look at it as a job, if you're going to look at it as a career, you're not going to last. It's not something you choose to do. It's, it's a calling that God chooses you to do. My goal is to, to become a pastor and to start a church out here in Fillmore and also just to uh, be a light, a good example, and give back to the community. Angel's a, um, he's a wonderful boy. I, I love my son. If, if I didn't have a son, things would probably have been different because when he was born, my, my whole world just turned around. I obviously wanted to be a dad, but I was so caught up in a, a lot of stuff. But when he was born, I've, I've always said, you know what? I'm going to raise him up the right way where he don't have to go through what I went through. I know that, um, that, that God has done a miracle in my life, and um, I, I, I refuse to go back to my old days.